getting any better But what can I do when there's something wrong When we keep holding up to the best day Welcome back to another episode of First Gear. Today we'll be buying our first car. Sorry, no. Just looking for another you. Looking for another you. Buying your very first car can be super exciting. It's also one of the largest financial commitments you've ever made, second only to buying a home. So it's important to be informed with the appropriate information. The first thing you need to do is check whether you'll need finance for the car. From personal experience, I would recommend not getting a loan on your first car until you have a steady paying job. If you want to make the jump and get financing on the car, shop around for the lowest interest rate. 3.9% that the dealer is offering you might sound pretty good, but you might qualify for lower with RAC or with a bank. Remember, most times you get finance on the car, if you can't make the full payment, the dealer will require you to get full comprehensive insurance. As a driver under 25 and on provisional plates, you will be paying a premium on insurance. Another thing to remember is to research the car that you would like to get. Things like fuel economy, car safety rating, maintenance and upkeep, and especially when it comes to older cars, long term reliability, are extremely important when choosing that first car. Buying a car from a dealer comes with its advantages and disadvantages. You'll pay a higher price compared to cars being sold on the private market. However, all used cars from a dealer will come with a warranty in case of a defect. Some dealers such as John Hughes will also throw in some extras such as mobile servers and roadside assistance, discounted servicing and repairs and other similar services. It's important to do a bit of research into the dealer you want to go with. Look at past customer reviews and be aware of some common practices. Don't feel pressured to make a decision on the day and ask as many questions as possible. And if you're unsure, go home and sleep on it. Now, it might be tempting to buy that really awesome Commodore or Nissan Skyline on Gumtree, especially when the price is too good to be true. That's probably because it is. Cars that are sold for a fraction of the price often have issues with it internally. Take the time to thoroughly test drive the car. Check the exterior for the overall condition and for wear and tear. Check for obvious leaks and then start the car up. Listen for any hesitation and make sure to travel in stop and go traffic and at highway speeds. You want to keep an ear out for anything out of the ordinary. I don't know any other way to show It's not getting any better I think we both know that there's something wrong we keep holding on to the best day Unfortunately, you can't always trust the seller's assurances that the car's been well kept and not thrashed all its life. If possible, always ask for the car's full service history. Possible red flags include the seller doing their own service to the car or if the car hasn't been serviced in years. Remember to do a check if there's money still owing to the car, whether the car's still registered, if the car's stolen or has been ridden off. All you need to do is use the Personal Properties Security Register Service and quote the car's VIN number. The vehicle identification number, otherwise known as VIN, is the unique 17 character serial number used to identify a motor vehicle. The VIN can be found on either the dashboard of the driver's side or on the side post where the latch is. And remember, just because you can't afford that dream car now doesn't mean you won't ever. Be responsible, be smart, but most importantly, be safe. I'll see you next time on First Gear. Looking for another, looking for another you.